Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Nir Basham about fostering creativity in the workplace. Nir Bashan, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hey, thank you, buddy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to have this chat. Uh, you know, you have a really interesting background, quite unique uh, for uh, my listeners, I think. We, we, I, I really do interview a lot of different people across industries, really from all over the world, uh, but I haven't interviewed too many that kind of fit your type of profile. Um, so this will be really fun. And today we're going to be focusing on fostering creativity in the workplace. Now, your work doesn't necessarily um, isn't necessarily specific to creativity in the workplace, more creativity generally, um, but that'll be how we frame things today. And I think given your background uh, that I'll share with listeners in just a moment, uh, I think you'll have a lot of really great insights and, and we'll have a fun conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. As we get started, I just wanted to read Nier's bio for everybody. From working with Hollywood and music stars like Woody Harrelson and Rod Stewart, Nier Bashan discovered something that may shock you. These creative superstars aren't all that different from you or I. It's just that they have mastered a method of repeatable and predictable creativity, a type of creativity that anyone can learn. And it turns out that the same type of creativity can be used in business and careers everywhere. Nier has taught thousands of leaders and individuals around the globe how to harness the power of creativity to improve profitability, increase sales, boost customer service, and ultimately create more meaning in their work. Working with clients such as AT&T, Microsoft, Ace Hardware, NFL Network, EA Sports, Suzuki, Activision, and JetBlue, Nier has spent the last two decades working on a formula to codify creativity for business. That formula is found in The Creator Mindset, a book which has been translated into two languages and released worldwide by McGraw-Hill Business in August of 2020. Uh, Congrats on the book release. That is awesome. And I imagine you'll talk a little bit more about that as we go uh, on throughout our interview today. Yep. And... And really, an incredible um, resume and uh, background, you know, and I love the way you frame creativity as something, a practice that we, that can be learned, that we can all do in consistent and sustainable ways. So that's how we're going to be exploring this uh, today. As we get started, anything you'd like to share by way of personal background, context, anything like that for the listeners? Yeah, no, I, I think you're you're spot on. I think for too long, Jonathan, creativity has been shrouded in mystery, right? It you know, people that have it, you know, are are untouchables and they're oh, they're so great. I wish I could be like them and you know, I'm not creative and so on and so forth. And so I think it's really important to get the word out there that everybody's creative. It just takes the will to want to do it and a couple of tools to help you out. And you could be as creative as those Hollywood and music stars. It just, you just gotta, it's a practice. You gotta do it. Yeah. And, and just like success in anything, it takes a lot of consistent effort over time, right? So learn, exactly. learn skills and consistency. And to go off on a little tangent for a second, uh, You know, recently I was watching The Last Dance on Netflix. Um, You you may or may not be aware of uh, that show, but it's it's about the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan and and the six championships. And you know, it just to me highlights. I mean, obviously Michael Jordan was an incredibly skilled athlete, perhaps one of the most uh, talented basketball players of all time. Yeah. Um, But he didn't just rely on his raw talent. 
he, he was a workhorse, you know, <laughs> he, he worked hard each and every day and he pushed his teammates to work hard and he really didn't accept anything but the best from everyone around him. And that consistency uh, over time is what led to great success. It wasn't, uh, the, uh, so he wasn't a flash in the pan. He wasn't just a, like, let's go in, show everyone how amazing I am. Um, he wouldn't have lasted very long and he wouldn't right. have had the success he had if he hadn't been consistent. And really what you're describing is the same kind of thing for creativity that there is some raw talent that people have. Um, I'm not a musician, you know, I, I actually sing, but I don't, I don't play instruments uh, particularly well. You know, I dabble on the guitars about it. Um, so I'm never going to be amazing um, and creative, creative as a musical artist. Um, you know, I don't necessarily have those raw talents, but I can foster creativity in other ways. And we all have our unique talents that we can leverage and we can build off of our strengths and then um, create from there. Uh, so anyways, I think this will, will be a lot of fun. Um, as we dive on in, um, why, why do you frame it as something that can be learned? I, really, most people I think in society today think about creativity as this kind of innate talent or skill that they, they are born with or they're not born with. Um, why do you approach it differently and how have you seen that be impactful in the workplace? Yeah, definitely. So I've, you know, I've run my own companies and worked for other companies for a while, um, you know, throughout my, my career. And I've noticed that the people who do well, no matter what they do in their careers um, or, you know, in management or ownership, um, are people that are creative. And the people that don't do well consistently are people that are not creative. And so having the, having had the benefit of work, working in Hollywood and working in the music business, uh, you know, traditionally creative businesses, I was able to sort of cherry pick different modalities. And those modalities are really not that unique. They are modalities that anybody can use to become more creative. And it was fascinating to me that, you know, the, the street rep of creativity is, you know, uh, you either got it or you don't. And so I wanted to challenge that. I looked in the market, Jonathan, and I found that every book out there, all the courses are about the why, you know, why we should be creative. And, and it got me really excited because the why is important, you know, um, to improve profit and to improve, um, you know, uh, workplace empathy and different types of, um, of relationship and organizational matters. And I got really excited. I was like, let's do this, you know? And then I looked in the marketplace and I couldn't find any material out there about the how. It was all about the why. So I set out to write a book. It's called The Creator Mindset. It's got 92 tools in it, and they're honest to God tools, um, you know, to unlock the secret to innovation, uh, sustainability, and growth. And what the book does is teaches people how to be creative. It's all about getting a pen and a paper, you know, uh, and sitting there and doing these exercises, just like Michael Jordan, you know, he would spend two, three hours shooting free throws. Um, did he need to do that? I don't know. He had natural talent, but it was more about grit and more about determination and more about a process. And I've seen that process from famous musicians, you know, um, all the way to wonderful CEOs and amazing uh, people on a career path that had been just, you know, leapfrogged by their ability to capture creativity. So I wanted to put out a book and put out a message to everyone that you can be creative too. Don't worry. Don't believe what you heard. You can be creative too. It just takes the will and it just takes a few tools to learn how to do it. Yeah, awesome. And, I, and if you don't mind, I'd love to just explore maybe one or two of those tools with totally. you. Totally. Um, but I, I thought I would just add, you know, I, I shared the example of Michael Jordan. From the creativity side, though, I remember watching an interview with, um, uh, with Stevie Wonder uh, a while back, and he talked about how he writes a song every day. So he, yep. he, just, he just sits down at the piano and he just writes a song. And the vast majority of those songs never go anywhere. Uh, obviously, he's produced a lot of really great music. But most of the stuff he writes, because he literally writes a song every day, never sees the light of day anywhere. 
but it's right. just that it's just exercising the brain, flexing that muscle, just being in the in the habit. That's exactly right. And and sometimes he strikes gold, other times he doesn't. Um, but but ultimately he's he's in the process each and every day. And I don't want to hold myself up to a Michael Jordan or a Stevie Wonder, but when I think about myself and I think about times I've been successful with creativity in writing, for example, because I do a lot of writing, um, both academically and in the practitioner space. Uh, the time that I do my best writing um, is when I just am consistent. And some of my stuff isn't great and I don't end up using it, but other stuff ends up really knocking it out of the park. And, it, and I get a lot of, uh, I can leverage it and I can get a lot of mileage out of it. But it's just making sure that I'm doing it consistently on a regular basis. And if I'm flexing that muscle uh, over time, I get better at it, just like any, totally. uh, any other learned skill. And so many people have raw talents that they never fully develop because they're just not, they don't have the work ethic. They don't have the consistency. Uh, I, I was also, I, I watched a video, I think it was on LinkedIn or something. Uh, Will Smith posted a video uh, about his success. And in a nutshell, he basically said, you know, hey, you think I just, this all happened to me just because I'm talented? He's like, no, I work hard every day. And he, he went through, you know, like five minutes of just describing what his day looks like and what he does and how he accomplishes everything and what his mindset is. And yeah, I, I think that's, that's just it. it. Nobody finds success in life, um, or rather I should say, no one finds sustained success in life through luck. You know, sometimes you can have a flash no and pan opportunity, but you don't find the sustainability. No doubt. Yeah. And you need a, you need a process and that process is going to be customized for whomever is doing it. So I believe that creativity is part of who we are as human beings. You know, 50, 60,000 years ago was embedded into our DNA. I write about Harriet, the first cave woman, you know, who saw a stick and a little, you know, arrowhead or whatnot and put the two together and fought the beast that was about to kill her, right? That was creative. Nobody ever thought of putting those two items together, but when they did, you know, they got amazing success. And that, I think, still, you know, over the generations is embedded into who we are. It's inside our, our bone marrow. And what we do is, as we grow older through you know, school or uh, society, we're told that creativity is not the stuff of the serious. You know, oh, it's music or oh, it's art. That's not serious. You know, and for me, creativity is, is really art and music and sculpture and fine art are like 1% of the creativity spectrum. It's where most of us start, right? We're in kindergarten drawing something, Jonathan, and you're drawing a pink tree and I'm drawing a purple one. And the teacher comes by and says, Jonathan, you know, trees aren't pink. And you go, ah, that's right, you know? And so, you know, you go on and on throughout life. You, you know, go to college, you're in grad school, and, you know, these are analytical constructs, and, and we lose touch of that creative way to look at things, and so, you know, I consult, and I do workshops and webinars with many, many companies, some of them that you've named, and a lot of them are really uncomfortable with thinking a different way, but for me, it is about time that we start looking at things in a slightly different way. We're, you know, operating largely on half of our potential. And we're constantly wondering why we can't get where we need to go. It's because we've stifled down the creative way of looking at things. We've stifled down soft skill. We've stifled down all of these wonderful and amazing intangibles. And I put it in quotes because they are tangible. They're just not immediately tangible. They're not, soft skills aren't immediately quantifiable. So we're like, ah, forget it. It doesn't show up on a PL sheet. Forget it. But don't forget it. Those are some of the most important things when, you know, looking at workforce development, looking at your career and saying, hey, I want to get to the next level. You know, Timmy has worked that job for six years and then he got promoted. I want to get promoted. Do I have to work that job for six years and then, you know, hope and pray that I get promoted? Absolutely not. Those are analytical mindsets. The creative mindsets will help you to uncover a lot of different, you know, maybe nonlinear path to get where you want to go.
Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm glad you mentioned that at the end, because that's where I was going to go with my next comment. Um, good segue. And, and you read my mind. Um, but the, the, long, the non-linear, I think most of real creativity, most innovation comes as we deviate from that kind of traditional linear path. Yeah, where, A equals B, B equals C, that sort of thing. Yeah. Because, and because we're, we're, yeah, we're just locked into a restricted mindset when we're going down a linear yes. path. Yes. And we, and we just don't see the connections in other places. And so, you know, when I read um, articles about creativity and innovation, it seems like what it always comes back to is the ability to for an individual or for a team to be exposed to new ideas um, or applying ideas from another discipline or another functional area into their own area in new ways. So they're open, they're beyond the linear, they're open to the variety of, of, of things that are out there. And then they start to see new connections that no one's ever seen before. Uh, and it's those new connections that then they can exploit, you know, to create a new process, create a new product or service or whatever. And, and it just requires us to get out of our echo chambers, to get out of our comfort zones, uh, to put ourselves in situations where we're going to um, interact with different, different people, different backgrounds, different thinking, different disciplines. Um, just, it can be formal, but it can be organic just so you have those chances to open the aperture of your mind and have, have ideas pinging off of each other. Um, then those connections come into place. I know, no for doubt. Me, I know for me, you know, uh, something else, I guess I was going to say in relation to that is just taking the time to quiet our mind so that we can be open to those uh, the different perspectives and the different connections that are around us. And I know for me that a lot of times my most creative and what I would say are, you know, innovative ideas, they come out, you know, I, I've been in a log jam. I've, you know, I, I, I've been thinking down one path for a solution, you know, for so long and I've been hitting my head against the wall trying to figure out how am I going to do this? How am I going to solve this problem? And then I'm just out like walking my dogs at the park and I'm just like quiet my mind. I'm just kind of, enjoying the the view and enjoying my dogs and then i notice something i notice you know a bird fly by or i notice something in the tree or i notice you know a kid playing soccer and then it like triggers something i'm like wait a minute i'm thinking about this all wrong and all of a sudden i completely turn the problem on its head i look at it from a different angle and that's when i come up with a solution that is far superior to anything i'd previously even considered <laughs> and it's it's just because i put myself in a situation to see new connections you're absolutely right. And so you, you know, if walking the dog and getting those ideas is working for you, then, you know, drive the truck through it, as they say, right? Um, but for me, I think it's really giving people tools to be able to do that when they're not walking a dog, right? So you're on a plane, you need to send an email to a client or a customer, um, you know, and you need to do it in five minutes. So you can't walk the dog. You need something that'll help you in that instance. And so I've set up all these little tools that you can use that will help you generate creativity. You're, you're absolutely right. The, you know, the fostering environment that we build in an organization to encourage creativity is really important, but without having the other end of it to feed ideas into it, you just have a receptive environment, but without the ideas and that creativity being generated. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. And so maybe one or two of your tools that you have in the book, would you mind sharing? Yeah, definitely. So uh, a tool that I really like that your listeners can use today is celebrating little victories. We are so bad, and this really comes from me because I'm terrible at it, uh, of celebrating little milestones on the way to the big victory. I set, you know, I've had companies for a long time. I've been an employee before too. And, you know, I've always said, oh, to get promoted, you know, I'm going to do this job for one year. My three year was going to get promoted. My five year was going to be, okay, I'll make a director or whatever. And so, you know, I didn't celebrate those little victories along the way that happened on that path. And what ended up happening was I, I didn't ever feel like I was succeeding. I didn't ever feel like I was doing well. So creativity comes from looking at the little things that are going right. And that's what I, I, I highly encourage your listeners to do. There was a, 
ice cream salesman many years ago, wanted to sell a bunch of ice cream machines, and that's an analytical construct, you know, volume. Uh, we're going to sell a bunch. So we got lists and called and, you know, did all this work to try to sell more machines. It worked for a while, but then like every analytical construct, it then soon failed. And he was wondering, you know, why can't I sell more machines? And then he got a call from a, a restaurant, you know, who was you know, going through two, three machines a month. And he said, why are you going through two, two or three machines a month? They're like, well, we're making, uh, you know, a lot of milkshakes and with our burgers. And he was like, hmm. So he went to the restaurant, stood in line. The line was out the door. It was around the block. And he ended up having the best cheeseburger he's ever had in his life, Jonathan. And that guy was Ray Kroc and the restaurant was McDonald. Had he have just stuck to that main goal, that main, my three year is such and such. My five year is this. Had he have just stuck to that, who knows what would have happened, but because he listened to the little breadcrumbs along the way that were telling him where he went, he needed to go, amazing creative potential came out of that. So that's one tool your listeners can do today. I'm doing a, uh, a webinar with a wonderful group, 300 people uh, later this week. And literally, I'm going to ask them to get a sheet of paper out um, because writing stuff down, and, and I have this properly attributed in the book. I'll probably butcher it now because I can't really remember, but writing stuff down triggers a different portion of the mind that, it, you know, um, invigorates different parts of the brain to be able to see things differently. So I love it when people write stuff down, not just think, oh, think about what little victories you have. You have to write it down. So I'm going to have the 300 people write down a bunch of their little victories, and I'm going to have them sort of look at their career, look at their business. It's kind of a mixed group. And I'm going to say, okay, what of those little victories are pointing you to things that you need to do? Is it, oh, I don't know, make a better relationship with this vendor because they're doing some amazing things? Is it, you know, take the, the company or the product or the service in a different direction? Absolutely. It's all there. If you start to look at your little victories, you can have amazing creative potential. Yeah, I love the focus on little victories. I think that applies to a lot of different areas of life, actually, when we're looking at motivations, just finding success more generally. Um, you know, we, we have to find ways to build confidence and those little victories give us that confidence. And from a creativity standpoint, it, it's the same thing. If, if we start to look out and recognize the, the small successes um, that, that we have had already, then we can definitely move forward and continue with that sustained effort, right? Um, yep. That we've been talking about so that we are able to, uh, to, to do really, really cool things. Um, definitely. I know we're about out of time. Um, before uh, we part ways though, I wanted to give you a chance to uh, give the last word and to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, how they can find your book, uh, anything else that may be upcoming for you um, as be before we close? Yeah, definitely. So the book's on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble. It's available all over the world. It's being translated into two languages. Um, it's called The Creator Mindset. I would love to hear from your listeners and see, you know, see what they think of the book. Um, I have a website. It's nearbashan.com. Don't worry. There's I think three near Bashans in the entire world. I'm not the one uploading call of duty clips. That's not me. Um, or like with the, there's a, a girl who's like has a Pinterest that looks like she spent maybe, you know, three years on it's like clothes and all that. That's not me. Um, it looks good though. That's the stuff that, I mean, really, really nice work. Um, <laughs> so I'm easy to find. I'm on Insta and Facebook and all those different uh, sites. We have a community on my website, I would love for people to join. It's free, it's moderated, so no 99 cent Viagra ads. It's really about asking and receiving information. It's Adam Grant and Wayne Baker's system. Um, so really, really cool, uh, free. So I would love to meet your listeners on there and continue the conversation. Wonderful, thank you so much, Nir. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Uh, the time has flown by and I'd love to continue the conversation. So perhaps we can do this again sometime. Um, but I, I really do hope that listeners will um, challenge maybe a preconceived mindset that you have around creativity and innovation. Um, you know, just because you're, you're in analytical doesn't mean you can't be creative, right? And, Absolutely. And there's just so many things we can do to foster both an innovative culture, but also innovative practices that can lead to, you know, daily 
small wins and daily creativity to to help our organizations to be successful. Uh, I know that's that's what you talk about in your book. Um, I hope listeners will check that out. Uh, check out Mir. Get connected with him on LinkedIn and other social media. Go to his website. Uh, get engaged in that community. Uh, and I hope everyone stays healthy and safe. Have a wonderful week. And I hope everyone can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. Thank you. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.